has use case and it has proper application, but like anything that's good, if it's used in the wrong application or out of place, it could be a negative thing. Hey guys, I'm Annie and this is my husband Josh and here are our six kids. Come along for the journey as we talk about family, recipes, life, and homesteading. Life doesn't get any better than this. I had a person ask about this topic. I know it's sensitive for some people. It's a sensitive topic. I'm gonna to talk about solar. Honestly, at the core of it, I hate the idea of solar. I hate the idea of the resources that it, it, it takes to use it. I know that's controversial, but I'm gonna go into it a little bit deeper here real quick. I think that there's use case for solar. I think that solar in its proper application is a good resource. However, I don't think solar at mass is necessarily a good thing the way that we're currently doing it because of the way that we mine it, because of the way that we produce it, because of all the carbon that is required to get it going and to get it sustainable. And then what do we do with this stuff after it's done being used? I know it's a controversial thing I'm talking about right now. Relax, be at peace about it. I just wanna give you my thoughts on it. For us specifically, we have a large property that in order to run hard power, it would cost a lot of money and it would cost a lot of carbon to get stuff laid out and dropped and done, all this stuff. So in our case, because we're using multiple systems off of one system, it makes a little more sense. It makes sense because it's portable. It makes sense because um, the system is set up on, we're gonna be setting up on a trailer so it's used one time on a trailer system for multiple different applications. So the amount of stuff that we're gonna be doing as we choose to use it, will have solar being pushed into it. So I think solar, on a short version of my short dialogue here, I think solar in proper application, off-grid lifestyle, rural settings where it would take just a lot of resources to get it in place, it has a use case to it. I think on mass, we need to reconsider it. I think we need to do a little more deeper diving on it. Don't just feed what everyone's giving you for information on it. Use the powers of the interwebs and do some research. While I'm out here, I'm gonna walk up back actually and check on the solar panel system that we've got demoed in place. We've got the RPS smart pump, that's a surface pump. So it's a pump with some batteries and some solar panels. We have a whole system that we're gonna be installing onto a trailer system. And the reason we're doing it is because we wanna stay nimble. We wanna stay portable. RPS normally has things for like NRCS, bigger farms, um, other situations like that. But we took their systems and we adapted them to what we need here at the farm. So we have a six panel solar system with an eight battery system with the inverter and the pump. And I'm installing that onto a trailer system because I wanna be able to move it to three or four different type locations and three or four different use cases. What we have found is that if we set too many permanent things in place too fast, we don't have flexibility, we don't have portability. So we went ahead and started with our exterior fence. We knew that our property line was our property line and we had to keep our animals on our property. So that's not a bad place to start. But then we took like three, four years until we put our split fence down the middle because we realized that we could get more rotations out of our pasture because we're like the shape of a rectangle. So we can rotate multiple times on one side, let this side recover, and then we'll rotate multiple times on this side. And that's how our fencing solution has kind of uh, evolved and morphed over the time. So back to the RPS solar system and our K-Line farm packs that we're using to irrigate because we didn't have a lot of water for a while. We were in a drought, one of the deepest droughts since the 1980s. We had the farm packs, that's a four pod portable polyline farm pack system with our RPS system that was pumping and it was cool because we had the ability to throw water from our creek onto the pasture and not ever have to convert over to feeding hay because we had a growth that was consistently in place and it was able to be maintained. Now we have a creek that's super full of water that we're gonna throw more water up here even though we're getting rain because we have solar and we have batteries. So we have the ability to just keep on putting water up there and keep that grass as healthy as possible to get as much growth out of it. So our RPS solar system we're making portable so that we can use it in different use cases as we develop as a homestead. And down the line, it might be something that we permanently mount somewhere, but for the foreseeable future, 
I see it as being a system that we're gonna have portable for a reason. So super, super demo setup. This is not our permanent setup, but I wanna take you on this journey because you have to be willing to adapt. We're okay, I'm not saying wasting our time, but adapting. And so like we threw together a cheap trailer that we had on the property. We set up a demo set of it. We didn't set up the full whole set, but we wanted to see how it would work out. So we took an old election sign to protect our electronics and some old roofing and the solar panels and we put them onto this trailer. So thank you to one of our local reps who's a really upstanding guy. So right there, there's a plug for you, Jed, thank you. Uh, he's done a lot of great service for us. <laughs> um, so we have a generator out back here. Generator can run the pump system. The solar system can run the pump system. So we're demoing how on these cloudy days or these overcast days because of the fires, how we can use the system. We've got, up here we've got four of these huge panels. I wanna say they're four foot long by two foot wide. I forget how many watts they are, sorry guys, but they're a lot of wattage. They're not just the 100 watt panels, they're, they're the big boys. So we got six of these total, but on this demo trailer, I set up four of them. And then we have the generator for the alternate uh, source back here. And then over here, we've got the batteries. You still got, I still got tools out here because we're still setting this stuff up and messing with it. These are about 105 pounds a piece, guys. These are huge. I've got eight of these, but right now I've got four of them hooked up. I have the inverter hanging back here in the weather protected area for the temporary spot. And then we've got our EcoSteady surface booster pump right here. It's smart, it's electronically driven, and it's super cool. And on top of it all, our creek is swollen to probably two or three times what it normally is right now because of all the rain we've recently gotten. Um, you can see that the banks were overflowing and it was right up to the edge of the bank system here. The beautiful thing is, is that the solar system is set up on this janky trailer. <laughs> um, it's the temporary trailer until we get this in place. It's completely portable for us, but we're using it. And we're gonna show you guys through this process how you can get a system that's, it's a pricey system, don't get me wrong, okay? But the beauty of it is, is that it's not just a single use system. If you dig a pond, you can irrigate from your pond. If you have a creek, you can irrigate from your creek. If you have a well, you can pull water from your well or holding tanks, um, a spring. Any water source that you get, you can use this system or a similar system and you can pull that water and redistribute it to areas of your property that it wouldn't normally get water on. And water and feed and fencing is what makes the homestead work. Uh, if you have animals, you gotta keep them in, you gotta keep them fed and you gotta keep them, keep them watered. So water is life in everything that we do. So having your system and investing into that water system is not a bad investment. Now it's a really bad investment if you permanently put it somewhere and you have to completely deconstruct that system and you're not quite sure. And that's what the beauty of the RPS system is that I love about it. And I want to just, like I said, I want to just share with you our heart on it is that we can eventually take that system and put it permanently somewhere. But in the meantime, we're coming up with a solution to keep it portable, functional, and very versatile to different applications for us to kind of iron out where we want to use it or maybe seasonally things change and we need to have it in different locations. All right, so I'm gonna start this pump up here real quick. We've outfitted a plug right here with a standard 220 plug so that it fits in our generator. So this is from our EcoSteady pump. This goes from our generator. So we can plug this into our generator, we can plug this into our house circuit or we can plug this into our solar circuit because we put the female on, this, on, on the same set up as our generator would be. So we use the same plug system for that setup. Over here it powers on, goes through its startup, and it's gonna kick in place here, and it's creating pressure right now. So it's a simple on-off switch right here. You have different modes, different settings, and it is pumping out uh, some good PSI up to our K-line irrigation system right now. And that little pump is 220, is what it's running off of. This is a 40 watt system. It's hooked up, and I'm gonna get it wrong. I always get series and parallel messed up, guys. But the batteries are hooked up in blocks of four where they run them together. And then we bring them back to 48 volts into the system here. And it is being charged by the sun as we speak. 
because it's a nice sunny day. I'm gonna take you up here because it's now, with the power of the old sun, it is now pumping water from our full creek that would just be running away down into the watershed system, which is a good thing. Watershed systems are really good, but putting it back into the same watershed is also an approved practice as well. So our poly pipe that led up to here is just a one inch poly pipe on the ground right here. And we are flinging more water onto the pasture. No energy being used as far as gasoline or um, energy from the grid. Once again, guys, this is our K-Line farm pack out here. It's these pod systems that we can throw water. It's 250 feet long. It throws water in about a 50 foot diameter per pod and they're overlapping a little bit. So you're watering a pretty big space here and they're in these portable pods that we can move around here. So you just pick them up, drag them around the property, use your tractor, use your, your UTV, your golf cart, and you are throwing water. We have a link below guys. It's uh, solutions.heartwaymembers.com and that link below will link you to some solar information, the farm pack information and other solutions that we like here for the farm. So that's our RPS system mixed with our K-Line farm pack system. Make sure you hit that subscribe button. If you're following us guys, we're trying to give you more homesteading and solutions. We're trying to give you more outside the box, uh, outside the normal thought process to how you can apply things at your property and you can get creative and do some abnormal things with some basic systems if you get creative with it and you get a little uh, ingenuity behind you and think outside of where you're at now and where you might be going with something or how you might be using it in the future. So have a blessed day, guys. Be encouraged to stay creative and stay nimble.